like you know, people were raised. That, that's really the only reason. I think there's a possibility of putting John McCrook in a horse box and sending it back to Somerton. To I would love to do that, yes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, really, it's easy for someone to talk that it's not there. But, I mean, mm. what decision would he have made if he had a horse that he wanted to run before Cheltenham? He, he, he thought in his own mind that Cheltenham was going to be off. I mean, it was raining solidly. So, I mean, what would you do? And what would anyone else do? They took the chance and it didn't pay off. And obviously, well, I've got to pay the fine. Well, so far as I know, you've been licensed as a trainer and McCurick has been licensed as many things, but not yet as a racehorse trainer. Well, I don't know. <laughs> so the point about Smart Express, surely, is what the punters think, and it's down as the first choice. And imagine if every trainer put horses as, as doubled entries and then made the decision on the morning when they saw the opposition, when they saw the going. Very good reason Ron Hodges gave, and I fully accept that. But as far as the public goes, it's a travesty of the rules. And he should put the horses in where he's going to run it. And then this double entry is bad for betting, bad for bookmaking, and bad for every punter around the country. And the jockey club have got to put a stop to it. You declared at the one place, you've got to run there if that meeting's on. It's an abuse of the system to do anything else. That's right. Now back to Chepstow, the three o'clock result. First number two, Spuffington, the five to four on favourite. And that horse finished third behind San Ravalli and King Credo, who runs in our next race here at Sandown a few starts ago. Second number one, Old Bridge at six to five. Only two finished, three ran. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we come now to the presentation of the trophies for the Barclays Bank Handicap Hurdle, which will be made up by Lady Middleton, wife of Sir Peter Middleton, Group Deputy Chairman of Barclays Bank. And we begin with the trophy given for presentation to the winning owner and received by Mr. Paul Slade. Wait in, wait in. Now, results from elsewhere. The first result at air, the 145. First number eight, Stormy Coral at nine to two. Second number two, Ask Me Later at 20 to one. And third number four, Darblay Street at eight to one. Non-runner number seven, Dorlin Castle was the unsuccessful 11 to 10 favorite and 11 ran. The 215, a fourth course win for number two, one for the pot at nine to two. Second number three, Political Tower, the five to four favorite. And third, number five, Cambalda Rambler at five to two, five ran. The 250, number four, Veyrua, the winner at 14 to one. Second, number five, Great Max at nine to one. And third, number one, Major Bell at 11 to two. Two non-runners, numbers six and seven, Heliopsis was the two to one favorite and seven ran. At Southall, the 140, first, number four, Easby Jope, Joker, fell at the first at Sedgefield last time, now first place at Southall at two to one favourite. Second, number two, back in business at nine to two, and third, number six, Ketford Bridge at 14 to one, eight ran. The 210, number six, target line hits the target at 12 to one, second, number four, Erlimo at 11 to two, and third, number five, rolling the bones at nine to one. Turner Prize was the three to one favourite, and eight ran. And the 2.45 and across the card double, double here for team Tim Forster after East Shore in the opener at Sandown. First number one, Rectory Garden at Evans. Second number two, Drusso at 20 to one. Only two finished, Legino was the 11 to 10 on favorite, three rank. Now this is a pretty unhappy sight. This is 14 months ago, Roark, when he was discovered in a field in Hampshire in a really terrible state. But the beauty is he's been Brilliantly cared for, cared for well enough uh, to run in the last race. He had to pull up in the end. With us is his owner, Harry Willis, and he looked dreadful in there. What, what had actually happened to him? How did he got so, so bad? No one, well, the, the guy who owned him, he, he, you know, he sort of given to me, but when he arrived with me, I just couldn't believe it. But anyway, I took him and he was. It's very good to him because he must have been nearly a shooting case when you first saw him. Well, being a horseman, I am, it didn't worry me too much. And then yeah. how long did it take? I mean, when you looked there, it looked as if he, you know, he would, he'd take a fortnight or so before he could hardly walk around the box. Funny enough, he walked, you know, his heart was there, you know, mm. it was no problem, really. I, I just had to get over, I had him blood tested, I had him worms, for worms, no, nothing wrong, just weathered, I suppose, like me getting old. <laughs> so he took the time to do his mane and tail, didn't he? <laughs> to start with. <laughs> No, he, he, you know, it wasn't as bad as one thinks, really. I mean, I, I really, I, I thought it would do the whole of the racing world and the horse world a lot of good to see a horse that, you know, 
today I'm proud of. You know. And uh, he, he, I mean, he was a very good horse. 1988, he won the Lambert, didn't he? I, I, mean, I mean, when I ran him at Newbury, and he hadn't run for two years, and I mean, he just catered him. And I did no more with him then as he has now. With, he's with Barry Stevens at the moment. And I still live at the place. And of course, I leave there because I'm finished at the end of the year. I still own a horse, but this is one of the greatest pleasures I've had. Really? And, and Harry, the horse, obviously, didn't, the dream didn't come true to David. How did no. you run? He had to pull up in the end. It's very pudding ground. Yeah, he, he just thought, he felt he might go. Mm. So, you know, he thought, well, sooner than break him yeah. down or whatever. But his legs, I'm never worried about his legs. And do you think we'll see him, see him back on the track soon? Yeah, could do. Could do. But I won't put him under any, you know, he won't go anywhere unless I think he's dead right. Well, good to see him fit and uh, yeah. remembering you from riding with you, Harry, yeah. about a million years ago. It's good to see you fit too. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. What a lovely story. We need more people around like Harry Willis. Well done on saving Rourke and uh, thoroughly enjoying himself. This two-day meeting is traditionally known as the Grand Military Meeting. And yesterday we had the big race for members of the armed forces, namely the horse and hound sponsored Grand Military Gold Cup. Now, Cuddy Dale was hoping to win this for the Queen Mum. A winner here last time out for Chris Ward-Thomas, and he was the man who rode, uh, wore the uh, royal colours this afternoon. This one from Jeff Hubbard's stable. There were 15 in all, though, for the Grand Military, and there was plenty of support for country member who attracted some good bets, including one of £3,000. Cuddy Dale next best, 4-1. to one. Buckboard bouncer, 5-1 to one shot. Cool Ground, former winner of the Cheltenham Gold Cup. Al, uh, Mr. Alice Hankey, Dominic Alice Hankey, 13-2, to 16-1, to 1, bar 4. Well, it developed into a real close contest, and coming down in the home straight, up the hill, down towards the, flat, the final one, on uh, this side, we have the country member, while on the far side, Buckboard Bounce. They're in the air together, these two well clear of Cool Ground, and uh, Cuddy Dale, who was trained by Nicky Henderson, and coming up the hill it was the favorite country member who stayed on really well given a super ride and the favorite landed some hefty bets buckboard bound second cool ground in third and cuddy dale a very respectable fourth found on park is honored to welcome her majesty the queen and her majesty queen elizabeth the queen mother who as patron for the grand military race committee has graciously consented to present the Grand Military Gold Cup. Her Majesties, or Their Majesties, are accompanied by Mr. Michael Clayton, editor of the celebrated Equestrian magazine. And ladies and gentlemen, here to receive the coveted trophy, please welcome Mrs. Sue Williams. Let's stay with the royal theme because, as you know, the Injured Jockeys Fund is one of the most deserving charities, certainly in racing. And every year they produce Christmas cards that uh, help raise money for injured jockeys. One of the most popular was the 1993 card, which was called We Three Kings. Now, this was a picture by Susan Crawford of the heads of Arkle, Red Rum, and Desert Orchid. And because it was so popular, there's to be a limited edition print signed by the owners, jockeys and trainers, and these are for sale for £95 each with an unlimited edition print costing £15. They're available from the Injured Jockeys Fund at this address, 29 Mill Lane, Wellin in Hearts. I'll just repeat that. The Injured Jockeys Fund, the IJF, 29 Mill Lane, Wellin, Hertfordshire, and the postal code is al 6 9 EU, that's £95 for the print and the unlimited edition print are available for £15 each. And an update on that uh, Ron Hodges story of the double declaration of the Smarties Express. As expected, he has been fined the standard £360 fine for the first offence because if you declare as a preference one race course and come to the other one, uh, whatever the reasons, and Ron gave his reasons perfectly fair, whatever the reasons, it's against the rules to avoid just the situation that John McCreary is getting a little bit overexcited about. Of course you can't do that. No one is actually doubting 
Ron's word that he took the risk of coming here, but he was always liable for a fine. So I think that particular issue should be closed now. Let's move on to something that's very open, the picture puzzle. Can you get today's picture puzzle? A big race picture puzzle. Makes him easier to carry, it says. It's 0891, the number to call, 0891 991144. 0891 991 And in addition to the £100 prizes, there is copies of the winners of this book, Richard Pittman's new book, Fit for a Queen, Inside the Queen Mother's Racing World. Beautiful new publication coming through. And also the Cheltenham Festival official guide, which I read with great interest and help as I'm writing a Sunday article uh, yesterday. A very fine pair of extra prizes besides the £100 for the three winners will be shown you before the end of the show. And on now for our next horses in the paddock, pilots on board, let's take these for the Burnt Oak and special cargo novices chase. Two miles, seven runners, Eastorp heads them. Yes, Graham. And Eastorp is the two to one favourite, written by Mick Fitzgerald. Red Bean at 12 to one, Anthony Torrey. Finkel Street at 66 to one, Andrew Thornton Wright. Now in a colour change, has uh, got bright yellow cross belts for number three, Finkel Street. Here he comes, he is written by Jamie Osborne, and they're currently at seven to two. King Credo is ridden by Jason Titley at 3 to 1, Maremma Gale at 50 to 1, Brendan Powell, and Juliet Jones at 92, partnered by David Bridgewater, is the lineup for the Burnt Oak and Special Cargo Novices Chase. Well, they probably aren't stars on show here in terms of chasing ability, but they're certainly useful horses, and it's an interesting little race here. Weights headed by Eastorp and Red Bean, Eastorp in tremendous form, won at Doncaster last Saturday. Jumped soundly in the main, Mick Fitzgerald said the horse had a look at one fence when another fell in front of him, but basically did job, job well. And John, one with a little bit up his sleeve after hitting the front. Well, he pricked his ears right uh, in the shadow of the post, but I must admit he looked after work really hard for this race. They're just approaching the... Uh, yeah, he's pricking his ears now. La last as we, as we see them. And I just thought that he looked as though he'd had a um, hard old slog throughout this, maybe um, it was only two bars, but just at this stage, Mick, uh, Mick Fitzgerald, in fact, we're just approaching the last now, pricks his ears there, which is always a sign that there's a little bit of petrol left in the tank, and then uh, I just thought that he had to work hard, but maybe he's just a lazy old devil, and uh, was keeping a little bit to himself, whatever, he's won nicely there, and he looks in good form with himself this afternoon. There's no doubt which horse looks outstanding in appearance here. Several of them look well, but uh, King Credo is a most imposing horse. A nine-year-old, a ten-year-old now by Kinglet. He's the mount here of Jason Titley. And he knows Sandown very well, having taken the Imperial Cup not so many years ago. And here's a show of betting. Eastorp is the two-to-one favourite. King Credo at three-to-one. Now there's a bit of money for Here He Comes, who began at 4-1 to one and is now showing at 3-1. to one. On 9-2, to two, Julie Jones, 12-1 to one, Red Bean, Marima Gale at 50-1, to one, and Finkel Street is our outsider at 66-1. to one. Well, Marima Gale, trained by uh, Richard Mitchell, ridden by Brendan Powell, and this one ran at Wynn Canton. Late last month, Maremma Gale, ex-Irish Gelding, and uh, just had a few runs without really showing too much at all. Coming over, in fact, we're looking now at um, we're looking now at Finkel Street. In actual fact, um, normally runs in Jeff Hubbard's covers in actual colours. I was well, I hope he jumps better than the lad stands up because um, just knocked him over there. I was just talking to Jeff Hubbard about this horse actually beforehand. And he said that he's always thought something of him. He said his jumping's let him down. He said he's had quite a bit of intensive school. He was expecting him to run back this afternoon. Just on the colours, John, um, they were scheduled to have a run. Well, they did have a runner in the second race, and that carried similar colours. So I don't know if they've left <laughs> Mr. Hubbard's set at home, but uh, it's caught us out and obviously caught them out too. It won't have caught GG, though. I bet he knows. <laughs> I hope not. Very well bred, this horse. 
and he's one on form at the minute you couldn't really fancy here's one that plenty of people do here he comes although or despite the fact that it's got the invaluable assistance of Jamie Osborne on board here he comes although he's got lots of ability he hasn't given me the impression that uh, he really loves jumping as I say he lacks physical scope if he gets uh, in a clear round and enjoys himself he could win this without coming off the bridle but uh, that was a good, I want to back him. Yeah, he ran well at Ascot behind Uncle Ernie in a handicap. And it seems really strange that um, he could get round there and not be able to cope with the fences at Winder, which is uh, significantly easier. But uh, anyway, Jamie Osborne on board this afternoon. We'll wish him luck. Juliet Jones, she fell at Kempton last time out in a very hot contest indeed. And... It's got to be said that that was behind Brief Gale, but it's got to be said she jumped immaculately. She just fell because she was tired. I mean, she's certainly one to watch going around here because she really was impressive. She's had a couple of hard tasks um, since she's been novice chasing, finished behind Auburn Castle at Newbury. And uh, trainer Paddy Butler said that normally only ever sees one magpie on the way to the race, and he's seen two this morning, and he's hopeful. Johnny, actually, I mean, it's a little bit of a surprise that she's not gone, well, I suppose there aren't any now mare's chases, but she'd be a good thing in one of those. She's quite a substantial mare. You can probably, when she stops to uh, a slower pace, you can probably see she's got quite, quite a lengthy filly with plenty of scope to her. I saw her run over hurdles early in the season at Huntingdon, and she jumped hurdles really well, too. Well, she's a very good stamp of a horse, and she's still only six years old, so... I would imagine that if she doesn't win a novice chase now, they might just put her away or keep her to her so that she remains a novice for next season. Red Bean, well, he got round Windsor last time. There were no problems with that and uh, showed a significant improvement in form. He'd been pulled up prior to that here. That was behind Sandra Valley quite a few months ago, so obviously something's been wrong with him. Jack O'Donoghue trains Red Bean, and uh, here he comes round in that race. That was where he unseated Tony McCoy. Strictly speaking, we do a positive and negative eye-catcher. He's down as our negative, but I should point out, in, just in case the O'Donoghue team get a bit annoyed, that he doesn't take the eye because he's a little bit nervy and he tends to sweat up. He's done so down his neck and did so in the paddock, which spoils any work that uh, a stable attendant's put in. Um, but it's not, uh, not to decry the efforts of those involved with him. In fact, it's a natural trait, and I'm all for horses behaving uh, to patterns. It's when they uh, react differently the way you expect at the time to be wary uh, that's the time to be wary news from the old one in the ring well this novice chase has been run over two miles since 1985 three favorites and ten runnings have won it he's thorpe's favorite and the boards are strongly fielding against it they, they push it out the two to one when the rails were seven to four in places it's nine to four the field but generally two to one against these thought though in places you can get top of the head nine to four the weak horse is king credo nobody seems to want that open top of the head nine to four out the seven to two and the rails are leading the attack against king credo they want to get it hunters are not prepared to back king credo a well-backed horse is here he comes who did touch four early on into three to one here he comes and pretty solid at the bottom julia jones at five to one you don't beat that and it's at 100 to eight 12 to one against red bean but the horse backed is here he comes and julia jones all i can say the message down from the ring is very strong vibes against king credo well, I'm surprised that there are vibes against him. He looks magnificent, this horse. Well, you well, couldn't back him with confidence, John, could you? Well, you couldn't back him with um, any confidence following his last couple of runs if he's reproduced his first run of the season where he split Spuffington and Sandra Valley. He'd have an outstanding chance. And he does look in uh, very good nick with himself. Uh, and he ran well for a long way at Windsor. I mean, I'll just... I'll just just think that he is such a good horse he's got to come right and he looks well and for that reason he is the eye catcher red bean is a negative and uh, there you are certain amount of contrast here he comes with the eye catcher on the way to the course on the way down to the start he was also uh, much fancied by those down in the betting ring whereas king credo was I think there'll be a sound pace in this race because he's thought chased the leaders before going on at uh, Doncaster. Juliet Jones is certainly not uh, averse to jumping off uh, prominently. Mara McGale, John was evaluating earlier. Hard to fancy this one on what he's done, although he's a nice stamp of horse. To be absolutely fair to his chances here, um, he has been off the track or was off the track for seven months in between his two most recent appearances. 
so presumably all hasn't been uh, well. Uh, there's even more news from the monster in the ring. Two horses they're backing. Here he comes as now Burlington Bertie, 130 from 4 to 1. And the bottom one, Julia Jones, 5 to 1, into 4 to 1. And they're opposing King Crado very strongly out to 7 to 2. And now East Thorpe is top of the head, 9 to 4. So if you follow the money in the ring, it's here he comes and Julia Jones against King Crado and East Thorpe. Juliet Jones, David Bridgewater. David, who will be teaming up with several of a very strong Nigel Twiston Davis team uh, at Cheltenham and also Snitton Lane, on whom he won uh, at the festival last year. He's looking forward to riding that one too. John, I mean, hundreds of times, you, well, not hundreds of times, many times you went into Cheltenham on this Saturday beforehand. I mean, you're someone who was very laid back about uh, his life and work. I mean, did it occur to you, oh, I shouldn't be riding today, I might miss something at Cheltenham on Tuesday if anything goes wrong? Well, not really, because you just ride horses as they come along. You don't take silly risks, but I don't think that you um, are any more cautious up to Cheltenham. Things go on. You can get injured at any time, and most of these lads um, will ride anything, providing you know, providing it's a, got a reasonable chance. You'll even put up with something that's fallen a few times, providing it's got a chance of winning. But they're coming into line now. That's John Gigi. So, lining up then for this, the Burnt Oak and Special Cargo Novices Chase. In which Eastorp trades at 9-4. to four. Here he comes at 7-2 to two with King Credo at 7-2. to 4-1 to one, Julie Jones, 12-1 to one Bar. Only seven lining up. So the start is determined to get them as spot on as he can. Julie Jones in the pale blue colour just backing away down at the start. Two-mile start. Try again. Finkel Street... Uh, in a colour change. Oops, Julie Jones just tries to break the tape. An energetic horse, Julie Jones often makes the running, so very keen to get on with things. And uh, that's here. Go oh, and here he comes, isn't he? Here he comes, has lost a lot of ground at the start, very slow to go. And a uh, rather unsatisfactory start, perhaps. He's thought leading with on the inside Red Bean, on the right King Credo, they're at the first now. And uh, Maria McGale over in fourth place. Julie Jones can front run back in five today. Then comes Finkel Street, and here he comes. Jamie Osborne, very slow to go, and has given the rest 15 start. And they're at the second, which is a ditch, in which they're about five in line. And then, here he comes. So they come a past the enclosures with Eastorp leading. Eastorp on the front end by about three parts of a length to Julie Jones further left, the horse with the nose band, jockey David Bridgewater in the pale blue colours, and then showing third is Red Bean, followed by Marema Gale, two lengths back to King Credo, three lengths back to Finkel Street, and trailing, and by some way, here he comes. Eastorp, though, has the edge on the pack to Julie Jones, they make this right-handed turn to take them in towards the back stretch, towards fence number three, and it's Worry time going downhill at an increasingly fast pace on novices. So to the jockeys and me, East Orp on the right, Julie Jones the left, King Crater of the pale colours, further left in the yellow red beam. This is the third. And East Thorpe ridden into it uh, positively. And they're all over, including here he comes, who is the trailer, and they've got just about a mile and a quarter to go. The two facing for the front are East Thorpe and Julie Jones, the two who are natural front runners, although didn't uh, make it to the front last week at Doncaster until I have him gave way. But, oh dear, stride for stride they go into it. Back in third place is Red Bean, then King Guido. And here he comes, it's a very mulish tailing off towards the fifth, the plain fence. And still the two up front, Julian Jones and Eastorp, one and two. Then we have uh, Red Bean in third, about six lengths off the pace. Oh, it's great for me. Talk about taking your life in your hands. Julian Jones leading from Eastorp in second. A gap of six lengths then to Red Bean, five to King Credo. As they cross the next one, this is the water jump. And it's Julie Jones leading from East Thorpe and then Red Bean and then King Credo. And then Finkel Street and Marema Gale. And here he comes, won't be, he's coming up. He's been pulled up, or I think probably refused to race. Here he comes, he's right out of it. And there, Julie Jones gets low. East Thorpe in second, King Credo on the right. Red Beans are getting a little bit competitive now. Yellow colours on the left as they take the middle of the railway fences. 
Julie Jones, David Bridgewater, East Thorpe in second. Red Bean's getting closer. This is the last on the far side. This is the tenth. And it's Julie Jones leading from in second place, Red Bean. And then we have East Thorpe third. And so the odds of reward. East Thorpe, the favourite at nine to four, is back in third place. Here he comes, won't be winning. Third ticket, tickets, seven to two, but out of the race. King Credo is suddenly finding a renewed lease of life on the outside, but the leader is Julie Jones at four to one. As they come down towards the pond fence, they've got three to jump. King Credo is making great ground on the outside in the pale green. East Thorpe, the dark green and red. Further left of the light blue, Julie Jones. Yellow colours, red bean. That is between these four, they're well clear of uh, Finkel Street from Maria Miguel. This is the third last, and it's East Thorpe that seizes the initiative by a neck. No more. And Julie Jones on the inside. King Credo, who has hurdle race pace on the outer, and is striding forward like a good one as they head for home with two to jump. And it's King Credo and Jason Titley on the right. East Thorpe on the left. That's two out. And it's King Credo that has the edge now to East Thorpe in second. Julie Jones and Red Bean playing for pages only. And King Credo goes on by a couple of lengths as they come down towards the final fence. And it's King Credo coming to it. He comes to it. He is quick. And doesn't he jump well? East Thorpe in second. Red Bean in third. Julie Jones can't find more up the hill. But King Credo can. He's under pressure for Jason Titley for drawing away as they race up towards the line. This is going to go to King Credo. And the post. King Credo is the winner. East Thorpe is second. Red Bean is third. And Julie Jones fourth. And these are a long way clear of Finkel Street. And behind Finkel Street, Marema Gale completed. And so the result then at seven to two, King Credo has won this. The Burnt Oak and Special Cargo Novices Chase. This one in the colours of Mr. G. Gormal, trained by Steve Wood, ridden by Jason Titley, unfriendly in the ring, but certainly ridden with a lot of. Elan and positive uh, drive by Jason, who brought this horse with a well-timed challenge, looked over his right shoulder to check where the action is. It's getting increasingly remote as King Credo storms up the hill. Winner of an Imperial Cup here in his younger days, clearly back to his best. Twice he's won over the course, over hurdles, and this is his first chasing triumph here at Sandown. This is King Credo. This is our winner. Second horse home is East Thorpe. Third horse home is Red Bean, but he gets a deserved pat on the neck and he has pricked at the line. A classy performance. Sid Moodle will be delighted with this horse's first win over fences, I'm sure, but he'll also be thinking that there's more improvement to come because watching him gallop down the far side, he looked to be hanging. Maybe, if we have a word with Jason Titley, he'll say that it was the ground, but uh, whatever, this horse definitely didn't look as happy as I've seen him, and uh, Steve Woodman, rather, and... Uh, He's done really well. Tough performance to win here. He's had to come round the outside, never travelling well, never looked to be enjoying himself. Jason Titt has given him a smashing ride because he hasn't jumped well in the past. He's had him right at every single fence and come there to challenge Eshaw and uh, to go and win nicely, Jim. John, just uh, sort of exemplify or, or, or illustrate for us if you can verbally I mean, the horse is hanging with him the whole way okay he's changed his hands he's pulled his whip through how much pressure is he using with his right leg as opposed to the left leg to try and keep it straight I mean, you, you wanted to go forward that's the main thing but how do you keep it going forward? well you can only do so much with your legs and you, I mean you can see I mean you're basically using from below it's not even your knee it's below your knee and uh, so most of this is one of the uh, main reasons why jockeys need to carry whips because if a horse is going one way then the stick is the easiest um, way and the, certainly the best way of keeping him in a straight line but uh, most of it when horses are hanging is um, done just by just keeping a hold of the head on the opposite rein and it's got to be said that the further he went the happier he looked but um, I'm sure there's better to come Market, no significant guide there at all. King Credo opposed in the ring, out from nine to four, out to seven to two. And those on King Credo cannot believe the price. The return three and a half to one. The runner up, East Thorpe, also weak in the market, top of the head, the nine to four favourite. Red Bean was third at 11 to one. I tell you how desperate some punters get, get. Just as King Credo swept to the front going to the last, they asked for three to one on on the rails, and the punter went in with three monkeys on. £1,500 to win 500 tax free. He got out of trouble going to the last one he saw. Like King Credo had it wrapped up. But greatest jockey, I've got to ask you this. It's easy to praise winning jockeys. But Jason Tipley, I've always thought him a tremendous rider. Came over from Ireland, great reputation. He doesn't seem to have been given the chances. And I can't understand why his career has been almost eclipsed 
in the last year or two. When he rides like that, when he's given the chance, even you, greatest, have got to say he's a real star, that Jason Titley, given the chance. Well, I'd be the first to agree with you, Mac, but um, I'd also have to say that about a number of other jockeys um, riding at present, and it boils down to the fact there just aren't enough good horses and good jobs about for everyone. He's um, had a particularly good run, Jason, for Die Hain. Rise Don't Tell the Wife next week at Cheltenham, and uh, we'll have a chance of uh, seeing him again in the winner's enclosure there. The distances were four lengths and one and a half lengths. Four lengths and one and a half lengths. It's a, a lovely shot there of King Cray. They're nice to see him back in the winner's enclosure. He's always looked as though he'd be a good novice chaser. And it's got to be said that apart from just pecking slightly at one fence down the far side, he jumped immaculately this afternoon. So happy face there happy faces all round in fact and uh, let's hope there's some happy faces at home if you backed him if you have is his sp yes a win for number five king credo at seven to two and was this a boost for sound Valley? His chance in the arkle challenge trophy at cheltenham on tuesday sound Valley, who beat king credo over this course and distance in december second was number one east Thorpe, the nine to four favorite third number two red bean at 11 to one the tote returns win four pounds ten places two thirty and one pound seventy the dual forecast six pounds exactly and the computer straight forecast at ten pounds and sixty one seven red mm. winners in closures always happy scenes but this particularly jeff gorn and sue jameson sue of course red crater's daughter the dam of this horse and he actually was here was it three years ago yes. it was in three years ago yeah. this day yeah. Yeah. And you had your tribulation since then, Sue? Yeah, it's been very difficult. Difficult to find. The ground has been so bad, and he doesn't. He just doesn't. He didn't like the ground today, but he's still <laughs> quite an achievement to win on this ground today. So we're absolutely thrilled. He just hasn't had the breaks this season. It's given a lovely ride by Jason. Yeah, yeah he's, that uh, was really nice. And Jeff, isn't it when you have a good horse that he is? You go over fences. It's particularly. It's always risky. A horse, but you, you must have been very worried. Hearts and mouths all the time. Yeah. It's, uh, it doesn't take much of a mistake mm. I know, to cause a lot of damage, but he's a really class animal, mm. beautiful horse, great temperament, and he doesn't like Steve, <laughs> he's biting him and kicking him, Steve. Pushing him down. <laughs> but he's got a chance. <laughs> and, and, and Sue, I mean, today is very, very important for him because things have gone a bit wrong, but in theory, I mean, he was a... He was I a pretty good hurdler, wasn't he? I mean, he, yes. was, he was a oh, he talked about champion yeah. hurdler. Yes. yes, he was so unlucky in the champion hurdle. If he gets the jumping wheel together, he, we could campaign on... Yeah. We, we might have, have an interesting year next year. Just a reminder, how good was Crazy? She won quite a few races. She won 13 races. 13 it was, yeah. yeah. Yeah, she won a lot of decent and races. And how old would she be now? If she was, she, if she was still alive, she'd be 28. Yeah. Time, She'd be proud of him. Yeah. Right. We've kept going, we've kept going. We thought we'd get another one, and we did eventually. And, and Jeff, for you, do you remember Credit Daughter? Remember those days? I do. I remember oh, reading, a, band, oh, was in, reading a newspaper article, I think it was in the uh, the Express mm -hmm. and all things, and she was the uh, the best horse of the season, according to the tips at the time. And she, she won about three, uh, three and got placed on another seven occasions. And she had red rum behind her in the uh, Massey Ferguson. Yeah. Well, anyway, she's a particularly smashing, and I hope you'll go for Absolutely, that. and brilliant Fine. for Steve. So Smashy. pleased. I can you, afford man. to buy some rock cakes now for John McCurrick. Why throw him at it? Yeah. Well, well, why particularly for him? Because well, he, he said he wouldn't put rock cakes on him, uh, King, at Kempton one race in uh, a couple of Decembers ago. Did I think he's really? a great, yeah, I think he's a great fellow, actually. Yeah. Do you really? Yeah, I do, honestly. I, I love watching him on TV. Oh, well, he's, he's, so he's better watched on television than he's in the flesh. I can guarantee you that. Anyway, Particularly rock cakes on the way, John. Uh, besides the critics, Cheltenham breakfast of rock cakes. Let's have a rock cake news from uh, air with some help. Yes, Brough, the result of the 325. First number six, Gala Water at 11 to 4. Second number one, Carousel Rocket at 6 to 1. And third number two, Duchess of Tubber at 9 to 1. The favourite there was Norick at 11 to 8, 6 rounds. Now at Southall, the 315, a first number three, Rasinski, a second course and distance win of the season for that horse. The six to four favourite this afternoon. Second number four, Halgill at two to one. And third number two, Sarah J at five to one. Four rounds. Her Majesty coming through to present the 
trophy because this race, as you know, is in honour of those two Grand Military Gold Cup specialists, Special Cargo and Burnt Oak, Special Cargo owned by the Queen Mother, who is along there with Andrew Parker Bowles, who is the major player at Sandown now, and uh, the chairman of the race course. And uh, Her Majesty, of course, owns Special Cargo. She is uh, one of racing's most, the most famous nonagenarian in racing, but the owner of Burnt Oak was uh, Brigadier Roscoe Harvey, who's also a nonagenarian, and he, of course, is the owner of Rel Keel, and I know he's looking in, and he'll be accusing me of using stupid normal words, because he never suffered fools gladly, and uh, he's a great friend of, of racing, and indeed a great friend of the Queen Mother's. And quite a thought, what a debt racing and particularly steeplechasing owes the royal family. The patronage of the Queen Mother is something, goodness, in these commercial days, you couldn't even begin to put a price on it. Sue Jameson, as you said, is the owner of Credo's daughter, Jimmy Bowen, her husband, and Jeff Wait Kilden, in. Wait in. their partner, and Steve Woodman, who has had all sorts of problems with the horse, tremendous triumph for him, and I know this team particularly well, and they are genuinely thrilled, everyone's thrilled when they have a winner, but this lot are particularly thrilled because the horse means nearly everything to them. Plenty of good horses in those pale blue colours with the black cap and the gold tassels. So the Queen Mother knows plenty of dramas it takes when what looks like a good herd doesn't become a steeplechaser. And there had to be a question mark, didn't there, on whether King Crater was going to take the fences. Got himself on the floor. I was at Windsor when he fell at the last. Terrible day, beat, and then he went capsized at the last. And the hearts would really have been in their mouths today because despite the fact it's dried, it's very puddingy ground, and another another failure here would have really meant that uh, King Crater was heading very much on the downhill slope. And our park is honoured to welcome Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, who has graciously, graciously consented to present the trophy for the Burnt Oak and Special Cargo Novice Steeplechase. The race commemorates the celebrated chasers, Burnt Oak and Her Majesty's Special Cargo dominated the Horse and Hound Grand Military Gold Cup through the years 1983 to 1987. Ladies and gentlemen, receiving the Toby Debay, Sue Jameson, who along with uh, James Boland, Fred Incredo and uh, King Credo's owner, Mr. Jeff Cornwall. Well, coming on now to the Sunderland's Imperial Cup. This, this used to be one of the great hurdle events of the whole season before and after the war, and Braff Scott himself won it in 1968 on Persian Empire, the greatest jockey on Prey in 1980. And down the history has been run 75 times, 20 favourites have won it, but since the war only four horses have made all the running to win, which many think that Amigos will try and do, but it's opened up seven to four Amigos, so it won't be the shortest prize horse ever in the Imperial Cup. Two are winners Olympian in, in 93, and the great trespasser in 1922 went off at six to four, but the Imperial Cup uh, today at least, a light of former years of the great race it used to be. Now, despite the fact that North Stock ran so badly for that Win Canton race, when Alderbrook won and Trying Again was second, Trying Again is put in the clear second favourite here, four to one against Trying Again. Star player is a five to one chance, though they have done 12 to one star player earlier on in the week. It's then seven to one Collier Bay, and trainer Jim Older said he doesn't think the horse is quite ready, may need the run. Those terrible words for punters may need the run. That's why there's opposition. 
to Collier Bay, and it's then 12 to 1, bar the four. And just to tell you that none of the riders today has ever won the Imperial Cup of riding today, and the only trainer with a winner ever in the Imperial Cup who's got a horse today is David Ellsworth, won it in 1986 with Floyd, in 85 with Floyd. He's got Statterjack, but well, the stable seems quite out of form, David Ellsworth. Not many people think the Statterjack can win. Can Peter O'Sullivan win? And Migos. 7-4, trying to become the 21st favourite to win the Imperial Cup in 76 runs. Interesting also, McCain's runs Kingsfell Pet in here, and although he's never won the race of the trainer, he actually did ride the winner as a jockey about 40 years ago on the Bon Mo, and uh, we hope to be talking to Mick, who's hoping to win it with Kingsfell Pet. We were talking earlier on about the injured jockeys fund and those prints that have now become for sale at £95 each to help the injured jocks. Do you remember last week at Doncaster, there was that horrible-looking fall for Martin Brennan. It happened as they came down to the second last on Strath Royal in the Velka Pada Beach of Grimthorpe Handicap Chase. Well clear, down he goes, over the top, he landed on his neck, and that handed the race to Melia Gris. Well, he sort of half got up, and then went down. The paramedics were on the scene within seconds with the doctor there. And what happened? He bruised his lung. He cracked a few vertebrae in his neck. He had problems breathing when he got to hospital, so they had to give him oxygen. But the good news is that Martin is much improved. He had a very badly swollen face, but that's going down. And uh, he hopes to resume at Fakenham on Friday. So he's OK. And so is the horse, Strathroyal, who is hoping to run at Aintree. Now the final result at Chepstow, the 3.35, and a first and last race double here for jockey Carl Llewellyn. First number three with impunity at 5-2, to two. second number five, Miss Purbeck at 10-1, to one. and third number two, Mr Pickpocket at 10-1. to one. Dua Largo was the 15-8 to eight favourite, seven ran. The signs of spring, not just the daffodils, but the sails are up on the reservoir, and someone has turned himself over, and... Uh, I hope he's done those capsizing courses, which are the most dreadful courses you can ever do. You have to turn, keep turning the thing over and get up again. Anyway, he's standing, or they are, standing gallantly on the centre board and trying to pull the wretched thing over. If you're unlucky, he falls back over on top of you. <laughs> but uh, while he takes some water, we take a drink and a break and be back for the Imperial Cup. <laughs> However good you look, there's always room for a little improvement. Nicole? Papa? Now with even more refinement, the new generation clear. Clerics and medics, surveyors and lawyers, airline pilots, police women, stunt men. Since 1824, we've looked after the investment, pension and life assurance needs of all kinds of professional people. Who are we? Clerical medical, of course. The choice of the professional. shuttle brochure, call 0990 700 800 or see your travel agent. There is a tyre that gives up to a 5% saving on fuel in comparison with our standard tyres. Michelin Energy, driving down the cost of motoring. It's on its way. Maybe to your home. A new arrival. A new a more squeezable Andrex, because it's a softer, thicker Andrex. Squeeze it, and you'll see. 
new Andrex is strong, long, and now squeezably soft. The headlines. The News of the World is offering free film processing and a free Kodak film. Over to Susie with the development. Hmm. <laughs> there you have it. Free film processing and a free Kodak film for every reader. That's the News of the World tomorrow. Oh, it's a funny old world. When teeth are sensitive, it hurts. Sensodyne F and new Freshman Sensodyne Gel quickly calm the nerves that cause the pain of sensitive teeth. This winter, ensure that if the worst happens, you're covered by more than snow. Because at Commercial Union, we won't make a drama out of a crisis. That's it, it's over, we're finished. I thought I loved you, I thought I needed you. The heck I did. What a sap I've been, the money I lavished on you, and for what? You're poison, you know that? You made me feel used and dirty, not anymore. Your history. And you can stop smoking as well. If you want to stop smoking for yourself and your family, the quit line can help. The Imperial Cup now, the Sunderland sponsored Imperial Cup, over £20,000 to the winner. Ten runners and the whole of Sandown ahead of them. Here's the list. And trying again is currently four to one with Jamie Osborne. So round at 14 to one with Chris Moore. Nahar is a 33 to one chance with David Bridgewater and Mr. Drum at 12 to one with Jason Titley. Star player trades at five to one in the ring. That's the mount of Mick Fitzgerald. Then Amigos is the seven to four favorite with Mark Dwyer. Collier Bay at seven to one now, Tom Grantham. Holy Wanderer, not a 33 to 1 chance, but trading at 33 to 1 at the moment. Anthony Proctor claims the three. Satter Jacket, 20 to 1, Jason Titley. And King's Fold Pet at 33 to 1 is ridden by David Skern. That's the lineup then for this, the Sunderland's Imperial Cup. Well, the rain that was at Chepstow has not quite reached here, but the way it's clouding over suggests it might not be long in arriving. The owner of Amigos, the horse we're going to take a first look at. Pedro Sullivan has made it from Chepstow. He was in the paddock with trainer Jimmy Fitzgerald. Mark Dwyer has come down from the north to partner this horse that he hasn't ridden since it made its seasonal reappearance at Weatherby, where, for want of a better phrase, it caught the eye. Since then, it's been ridden by Richard Dunwoody, Derek Byrne and Eddie Callahan. Spread eagled its field on each occasion. This is a much warmer race than any of the three I've just described or mentioned, but he looks sure to take the beating. Led out by Kingsfold Pet, just in front of Nahar, who looks uh, as though he's improved. So Rab, only just two runs this season, the first time for a couple of years. Star player, the Chester Cup winner, being led out with Mick Fitzgerald on board. Statter Jack, no blinkers on this afternoon, the mount of Paul Holly. The next one coming through there is the favourite, Amigos. Not very big, but looks in really good form with himself. And Peter O'Sullivan, who's done well to get here from uh, working at Chepstow, just shaking hands with somebody there. Geoffrey Hamlin. Geoffrey Hamlin. And trying again, it's off weight. Jamie Osborne. The second from last to come out, just in front of Holy Wanderer and Tony Proctor. So, going off down the road at Endrin Walk, they'll be out of sight. Let's take an SP from Subtle. Yes, the 345, first number 13, Galaxy Rain at 4 to 1. Second number 2, Lord Glenvara, the 9 to 4 favourite. And third number 4, Marketing Man at 20 to 1. One non runner, that was number 1, and 13 ran. Try and again. Second last time out at Wynn Canton to Alderbrook. And he's been a model of consistency, this horse. He's knocked up uh, three wins and a couple of seconds in a very short space of time. And if anything, he looks as though he's improved physically since his first win at Campton. 
Now, as promised, here's McCain, who trains Kingsfold Pet, and you won this race how many years ago on which race? 1952, 50, 52 or 54, I'm not sure. Yeah. A long, long time ago. Who, who else was riding in the race that day? Oh, great jockeys, John Gilbert, Harry Sprague. I think John Oakley might have even had a ride in the race, if I'm not mistaken. Good old A long way behind him. You were telling me you beat Sir <laughs> Gordon here one day? Yes, I did, on the two-year-old, and um, we fancied the one I rode, and my governor owned the other one, what Gordon rode, which was favourite. And the one I rode was the better of the two, and I got left. Mm -hmm. And I got up and beat him a head, or a short head, and I got a right clout around the ears for, for doing so, and not winning mm -hmm. far. <laughs> not winning far? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Great memories, beating yeah. Sir Gordon Richards. Now, what about beating the other horses today? Kingsfold Pet, he pulled up last time. Yes, he did. He got, he got a right old belt over the back here, at, at, uh, at, uh, and when he ran last time. But I think probably he'd had six quick runs, you know. I, they mm. wasn't the greatest race in the world, but... You know, he's only a big baby still, and uh, I think he probably, I got at him too quick, you know. He's had a nice break now, I mean, this is a decent race, they're going to go like hell here on. Mm. But, uh, no, he's a lovely horse to train, he's the lovely owners, and, you know. I mean, he's, he's by Tina's pet, who's a sprinter, the, the, the mare, what, did, what was she? I think the mare, one of the owners from Epsom, bought the mare and sold it to my owner, I think, for £300, it wasn't good. It wasn't, it wasn't any good at all. Yeah. But um, she's bred quite a few winners. And what about picking up the £30,000? Be nice, wouldn't it? But what chance? Uh, hopeful, hopeful, hopeful. I mean, these are decent horses, you know. These are good horses. More hopeful than anything, you know. Hope you have a good day. Thank you. Thank you, Mick. Trying again the top weight. And I've got to admit, I think that he's good enough to win this race. He's a horse who's impressed me every time. Last time. He was just beaten by the flat race speed of Alderbrook at Wynn Canton, which was forgivable. And prior to that, he'd had only my Silva in front of him. And he really is a grand stamp of a horse, this. He's going to be a good chaser next season. And uh, he's been rewarding his owners and David Gandolfo's patience. And David Gandolfo, well, he's had a real resurrection this year. The horse has been in wonderful form. Jamie Osborne in good form. 15 winners in the last three weeks. But let's take a look at the Chester Cup winner, star player, who is something of a reformed character also. Star player, the man of Mick Fitzgerald. If you backed him, don't expect to see Mick or star player until very late on because Mick, is, his tactics have creep closer and closer. There's plenty of pace, or looks likely to be plenty of pace, uh, in this particular race, so that factor alone will enable him to get star player settled and jumping. Uh, no doubt he's got the ability to come and win this off this particular mark, but whether he's quite got the resolution to come and do it for punters, I think he's uh, open to argument, although as John said, there's no doubt that so far this season he has looked a little bit of a reformed character because he hasn't always found a great deal of the bit. Mac thought this morning that uh, you'd do well to better 15 to 8, which is a top price Amigos. Simon will tell us now whether that's the case. Slightly less at the moment, Amigos 7 to 4. Trying again is a 7 to 2 chance from 4 to 1. Star player at 5 to 1. Collier Bay is a 7 to 1 chance. Then we go to 12 to 1, Mr. Drum. 14, So Reb. At 20 to 1, Statterjack. And then the outsiders all on 33 to 1. Nahar, Kingsfold Pet and Holy Wanderer. Collier Bay, quite a keen horse. Interesting that Jim Old thinks the horse will definitely come on for the run because this horse is uh, very fresh and free in his races. He wears a drop nose band to try and help the jockey uh, have a little bit more control or to settle him better. There's no doubt he was a promising animal last year and acted well in the mud, but he hasn't run since December 9th. It'd be nice to see this combination win. Jim Old and Tom Grantham suffered uh, real bad luck last time out. And the same owner too, Mr Sturt. Yeah. And uh, that was with Mole Board, but looking at Jason Titley, successful in the last race. And uh, got chances of sorts with Mr Drum. And Mark Wilkinson, who trains this horse, was saying that, you know, he's his uh, own worst enemy. He said he's very consistent and the handicappers got him basically he said that something will come along and he'll drop into a race at some stage whether it's this afternoon well we'll know very shortly so i'm an interesting runner here he um quite caught the eye walking around the paddock 
and didn't run at all last season but he's had a couple of runs so far this year and uh, well the last of those was at Sandown behind Statterjack and uh, he's, ob he's obviously a horse who's going to um, show th something at some stage but I just feel that maybe he wants better ground than he'll be getting here this afternoon let's have some news from Mac well, the sponsor, Pat Dainsham of Sunderland, has got one loser in his book, Amigos. That stands to take out £35,000. Every other horse a winner, that's for the sponsor. So he doesn't want Peter O'Sullivan's horse to win, Amigos. And it is solid at 7-4, though I have turned one or two per punt and bookmakers calling 15-8 to eight against it. Money came in for trying again. It's very solid. Now at four to one, they took the seven to two, a bit of that back to four. I don't think he's going to, going to get any bigger trying again. Five to one star player, very weak as Collier Bay. The message is wrong with that. That's out to seven to one, and it's 100 to eight, 12 to one, bar the four. But most bookmakers on the track, one loser they got, Amigos. A one horse book, get that beat, they make money on the Imperial Cup. Well, this here, there is Statter Jack just behind trying again. It's trying again, number one, Statter Jack number nine, the mount of Paul Holly. This is a horse with a plenty of ability. Been a good servant to the Ellsworth uh, tea, uh, team over the years. Not an imposing individual as jumpers go. He's much narrower than most of these, but uh, that doesn't stop him being pretty effective. Although on the balance of his form, John, you'd think he got it on here with uh, a long handicap mark of 9-10, actually carries 10 stone. Yeah, I'd imagine that Collier Bay will go along and uh, give Statterjack a little bit of um, company, but they are a clean sweep for Amigos and the Collier Bay, the only one where there's any negative vibes at all, that's down in the ring. Nahar looks in really good form with himself, fourth in the county hurdle last year, this horse, he ran six in this race in actual fact last season, and uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe like uh, Soham, he's just so Sohab rather, he'd be uh, better suited by a faster surface. So just waiting for Sorab to come out onto the track. Nahar is a 20 to 1 chance from 33 years. It's a very keen hold uh, going down to the start, did Nahar. Amigos is on the extreme right. Should be plenty of pace on this uh, in this race. Amigos on the extreme right can uh, front run, but it's just uh, backing away a little bit. Mahar is up on the inside. Amigos some way off the pace. So Lining up, £50,000 bonus, win this race, winner at the County Hurdle at Cheltenham, that's it, 50000 in the bank as well as 30000 for winning this race, and trying again, going to be led in. Holy Wanderer, the horse has been on a bit of a losing roll, but that's it, uh, they're off, and the Holy Wanderer is a little bit slow to go. The horse has got ability to win a race sooner or later. I'm trying again on the extreme right, but it's Amigos that jumps out and has the edge as they come down towards the fur. Amigos, what a wonderful stride the horse has. But uh, trying again is coming up to share the pace and these in front of Satterjack as they come to the first. Collier Bay, Kingsfold, Patton, the hard track these. And they're all safely over. Holy Wanderer is detached by about uh, five lengths. Come down towards the second. And it's Amigos leading, just. Trying again is on his outside. And uh, they'll be virtually in the air together at the second. Oh, and Amigos, he went through the top of it, dived through it. Trying again in second, Kingsfold, Pet and Nahar the inside. Then comes Collier Bay, Mr. Drum, Satterjack on the outer, followed by Star Player. And uh, then behind Star Player, So Rab at the back marker is Holy Wanderer. A circuit to go there, and it's Amigos uh, with the cutting edge. Trying again is second, Nahar the inside third, Kingsfold, Pet four, Collier Bay five. Then Mr. Drum in six, Satterjack racing in the seventh slot. Star Player behind that, So Rab, and then Holy Wanderer downhill towards the first of four flights of jump they have to jump up, take on the back stretch quite a long run before they get to it mark dwyer steadied the pace a little on amigos the leader has uh, raced aggressively in the past making order win at doncaster and uh, huntington and has the edge in the sunderland's imperial cup by length and a half two trying again in second and nahar in third and kingsfold pet the inside of collier bay and mr drummer Satterjack and star player and so raven holy wanderer in the white jacket is still the trainer about uh, 10 lengths off the base. Gave that away at the start. Level up down the back stretch. 
Amigos has it. Amigos trying again, and then Nahar and Collier Bay, and then King Saul Petten, Sato Jack and Mr. Drum, and star player. And Amigos jumped that one deliberately. Still has the edge uh, by a length and a half for trying again. Nahar the inside of King Saul Petten, then on the outer races, uh, Collier Bay. Two lengths down to Mr. Drum, the inside of Sato Jack, and then star player who hurdled well. Then comes Holy Wanderer, who's passed one. So Ram is the back marker there halfway in the Sunderland's Imperial Cup. Amigos has it by a length and a half. They cross the next, no change. Amigos has it by a length and a half to Nahar the inside of trying again, just uh, kicked along by Jamie Osborne to get competitive. And the horse responds. Comes up within a length of Amigos, the leader. Back in third place is Nahar. And then we have King's Hall Pet and Collier Bay and Mr. Drum the inside. Followed through by Holy Wanderer and Star Player and still Amigos has the edge, three quarters of a mile to go. Amigos trying again, is trying again on the outside. Then Nahar running his best race for a long time. The red colours on the rails and third. King's Hall Pet's travelling well. Collier Bay makes ground on the outside. Mr. Drum behind these. Then comes Star Player and uh, Holy Wanderer and, and uh, the back marker is now so wrapped. But it's Amigos at 15 to 8, the favourite on the front end. Turning them into the home straight with a lead of a length and a half in the Sunderland's Imperial Cup. Has the edge Amigos. Nahar's after him in the red. Collier Bay travelling well. Statterjack makes ground on the outside of King's Fault Pet. And then behind these, uh, star player, Mr. Drum under pressure. Holy Wanderer getting closer. Down the straight they come. They've got just over three furlongs to go and it's getting serious now. But Amigos has the reserves. He's still the leader by length. Here comes Collier Bay under Tom Grantham. And it's uh, Collier Bay coming to take Amigos with Nahar on the left in red. This is the second from home. Amigos and Collier Bay in the air together and it's Collier Bay going the better to Amigos in second and then on the inside races Nahar, these are followed through uh, by King's Vault, Pet and Star Flair is under pressure, uh, under pressure but staying on, Amigos drops away and it's Collier Bay coming to the lead at the last, at the last and he's jumped it well today, Collier Bay clear by four but to Nahar, King's Vault, Pet and then Star Flair and as they race up towards the line, this is Collier Bay's race, it's clear by six a race for places only, up towards the line, Collier Bay is going to take it, and the early week messages were right, Collier Bay takes it, Collier Bay is the winner, star player is second, a photo third, with King's Fall Pet and Nahar, the East Pier of Saturn Jack and Migos dropped rather tamely away, then came Holy Wanderer and so Rab and Mr. Drum, and in the end trying again was last of all, and so at 6-1 to one, the result of this, the Sunderland's Imperial Cup is in the colours of Mr. Wally Sturr, trained by Jim Old, ridden by Tom Grantham, and in some ways compensation for that unlucky call of the stables mole board here earlier in the season. Collier Bay has won this, the Sunderland's Imperial Cup at 6-1. to one. Second horse is number five star player, that one in the colours of Paul Smith, trained by Roddy Baker, ridden by Mick Fitzgerald, and I've called a close call for third between number 10, King's Fold Pet and uh, number three, Nahar for third place. The judge confirms a photo outcome uh, to the minor honours. Sadly, Amigos uh, couldn't keep up the gallop that he'd set down the back stretch. Perhaps reaching for the second flight might have taken more out of him uh, than we thought, but he's dropped tamely away. It's Collier Bay, though, a horse who uh, revels in heavy ground, who's come up the hill in fine style. He's, he's taken this Sunderland's Imperial Cup and uh, the big prize winner last year. It's a six to one winner today. And Tom Grantham in the colours of Wally Sturt. Collier Bay, the winner. As they turn for home, Jim McGrath said there's only one horse going to win this. That's Collier Bay, and he was proved right. And certainly, it's nice to see that there's some justice after all, because he was such an unlucky loser when he tipped off the side of Mulboard here a few weeks ago. And he's had an armchair ride again on this horse. And Amigos, as uh, Graham said, just tipped the top of the second flight. And he also dropped his back legs after landing over the far side. But really, this horse has come here absolutely uh, cruising here, coming towards the second last. And Nahar has run a blinder over on the uh, far side. So is King's Fold Pet. But it's Star Player in the yellow and green colours coming, who's eventually going to take second place. But it was some way behind the winner. Yeah, it's quite interesting what uh, the vibes emanating from the stable that he'd need the race, because we said before, he looks with his drop nose band as though he's a pretty keen horse, full stop. But I suppose when you've been uh, largely out of form, as Jim Earl's been for the last three months, how can you have any real confidence? But the way that horse jumped that last hurdle and stormed up the running, and he puts real distance between himself and the others. I mean, he's won with plenty in the locker, and if he's in anywhere under a penalty uh, in the next couple of weeks, you wouldn't have thought this has taken as anything like as much out of him 
as it has out of the opposition here, he's going to take some stopping. Well, I, sh I should think they're looking for a £50,000 bonus for any horse that wins this race and then goes on to take a race at Cheltenham. And he'd have two or three possible engagements there. Collier Bay, a 14 to 1 chance when betting opened on Tuesday. It was a 13 to 2 chance in the offices this morning. Touched 8 to 1 on the course, returned the 6 to 1 fourth favourite. And punters, no doubt, were put off when Jim Old very honestly said that he thought the horse possibly needed the race and that it might run out of steam coming up the hill. Well, you saw what happened, it certainly didn't. Return 6 to 1, Collier Bay. The runner up star player, a 5 to 1 chance. And very close for third between Kingsfold Pet at double carpet, 33 to 1, and Nahar, number 3, who was back late down to 20 to 1 from 33. It's first. They're not calling the third there. So coming back now is Tom Grantham. Such sweet as this must be for him after Mulborn in the Edward Diamond Hurdle. Here he is. And racing is so strange, isn't it? You're down one day, you're in the clouds the next. Good for Tom Grantham. It's a bonny horse, this. He was trained by John Gosden on the flat. And he absolutely guided one night in a maiden race at Salisbury. Over a mile and a half. I should think there's no doubt over hurdles he'd get two and a half miles. Kingsfold Pack confirmed as third. Good run from him. Five pounds out of the handicap. But unlucky to meet one in Corking for in Collier Bay. So if you took the early price in the week, you've got much bigger odds than you'll see now, because Simon has all the finer details. And you'll get a slightly better return on the tote as well. It paid eight pounds, seven to one. Six to one, Collier Bay. Second number five, Star Player at five to one. Third number 10, Kingsfold Pet at 33 to one. The win tote, as I say, eight pounds. Places 240 and two pounds 10. The dual forecast, 19 pounds 20. Amigos was the 15 to eight favorite, 10 rand. And justice was done. Wally Sturt's colours, if you saw Mobile, yeah. got Absolutely. up all the last meeting oh, here. If he'd have fell at the last, yeah, I'd think I'd committed suicide. <laughs> Actually, going to the last must be an awful moment oh. for a watcher. Well, I had somebody's head go straight in front of my yeah. doctor, so I couldn't see the last, so that was a blessing in disguise. Yeah. And you heard the cheer then? Oh, I heard the cheer then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, how did you take that Mobile incident? I mean, that, that day driving home, it's one of those awful things that you try and put behind I, you. I've so had fall as before, so... You know, it's historical. You've got to be mm. uh, pragmatic about these things, you know. Well, you have been, and you've come and got this one. But he hadn't run since December. How, how confident was Jim he, he got, him, got him ready? Well, he was convinced the horse would blow up, you see. Yeah. But I'm the optimist, and I said no. But um, Jim said, oh, no, he'll blow up. He needs a race. Because in times gone by, he's a very gross horse. He, need, he yeah. invariably needs a race. But he's been working the backside off of it. So yeah. if it wasn't fit today, he'd never be fit. <laughs> well, you've got that right. Yeah. Trainers don't always have it right, do they? No. Everything is safe. No. <laughs> well, it's very interesting to yeah. change. You see, a month before the race, we win the Imperial Cup, Wally, yeah. and as the time progresses, well, I think this will beat us. And as we get to the day, you see, we're going to be the rag. We're going to win. We're going to be beaten 30 lengths. It's, it's always they, they lose their confidence. You see, <laughs> don't well, ask a trainer for a tip. <laughs> well, that's a great. You know enough about it to have a view. But yeah. tell us, he's in the County Hurdle, the Cold Cup, isn't yeah, he, on sure, Wednesday? Sure. As a fifty thousand pound bonus, that's will, right. Will be going right. for it? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yeah, assuming the horse comes out of this okay, and I see no reason why he shouldn't. You know, um, Jim's shaking already at the mere thought of it. <laughs> here, here is Jim. He's, he's, he's coming, coming across one last drag of that. Congratulations, Jim. You're welcome very much. 96 days since you ran. How you confident run. were you that you had him 100%? We, we heard Wally saying you were getting confident a month before, and then it was getting less and less and less. That's about the song. <laughs> yeah, we were Wally kicking my ass. I had to get him fit, didn't I? <laughs> and I've got Tom was coming here now, yeah. because the last time we, we, we talked to you, uh, you were... In, and Jim and everybody, the, that worst yeah. of all situations. And yeah. to your great credit, I think you came on and said, well, what a choker it was. And yeah. It's, it was one of those things, and it's forgotten about now. And it's, you know, we put it right on Tuesday at Cheltenham. Well, it was forgotten about uh, now, but it must have been difficult for you not to forget, to forget about it if it went to the last hurdle. I did, it did go through my mind, but um, only very briefly. And uh, sure luckily, I saw a great stride, stride, and he came up for me, and away we went. You know, it was very briefly. Wonderful. Very Wonderful. And Jim, he's in, in Wednesday. Wally's already jumping about at that. £50,000 bonus thing for everybody? Oh, well, we'll go home and discuss it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> See how the horse comes out of it. And of course, before then, Tuesday, these colours, Mold Board, a yeah. tremendous favourite for Channel 4 viewers. He may be getting a bit long in the tooth, but who isn't? 
how, how, how good is he still? Well, unless I messed him up this morning, he's better than he's ever been in his life. Better than he's ever been in his life? Absolutely. To this day, anyway. So, uh, we can hear that, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want a glue pot, though. We want a level playing field, nice, perfect ground. We want. I think we might get it, don't you? Nice, no, no. drying fast. No, no. Might Never be a glue pot. <laughs> Wouldn't want that. Anyway, it's really nice to have you all here, and congratulations. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Well done. Thank you. Great. Just had a quick chat with Mark Dwyer, who rode the beaten favourite, the well-beaten favourite, it turned out in the end, Amigos. And uh, he said he didn't jump the first three very well. And he said, to be brutally honest, he said, I don't know if it was the ground or what, but we were beaten shortly after turning at the home straight. It looked as if he was sort of cruising, but he felt that there wasn't a lot left underneath him. And he can't really offer any excuse except that he was beaten turning for home. And uh, I think he was about fifth or sixth in the end. A very disappointing run by the favourite Amigos. And poor old Peter O'Sullivan made it from Chepstow, made it here, only to see the money go down. Now, a slight amendment to the result of the 3.45 at Southall. Uh, again, number 13, Galaxy Rain, 4 to 1. Second, number 2, Lord, Lord Glenvara, 9 to 4 favourite. And third, number 4, Marketing Man, at 20 to 1. The non-runner, Cat Ballou, was a late withdrawal, and Rule 4 will apply to all bets. There will be a deduction of 20 pence in the pound. 13 rand. Ladies and gentlemen, we come now to the presentation of the trophy for our feature race today. This is the... Sunderland's Imperial Cup, which was presented by Pat Densham. He's a colourful chairman of the leading rails bookmaking firm, accompanied by his wife, Betsy. And here, ladies and gentlemen, to receive his trophy, will you please welcome the owner of the winner, Mr. Wally Sturt. And just, ladies and gentlemen, just a point of interest, Pat Densham was very uh, generously uh, said that he'll give uh, a bonus prize of £50,000 should the winner of today's race go on to win any race at Cheltenham Festival, National Hunt Festival next week. And we can tell you that the winner is entered in the Coral Cup. The four o'clock at air result. First number two, Bang in Trouble at 13 to 8. Aggressively ridden by Lorcan Wire to make all the running. Second number one, Fearless Wonder, the 6 to 4 on favourite. And third number four, City King at 16 to 1. Non runner number three, 5 ran. Well, one of the outriders here today, I know he's carrying a golf medal. The outriders in the military races earlier on. These two stalwarts have uh, medals of earlier conflicts and by the way it's something still in their pocket <laughs> and we just heard that uh, Mold Ward is better than he's ever been said trainer Jim Mould for the champion hurdle on Tuesday and after the break we have a special look we've been out and about around the stables of the country this week at three of the major contenders for that champion hurdle on Tuesday so stay with us Life can be so unpredictable. For years, I lived with my husband, a compulsive gambler. Here. Then, one day, he decided to leave. Which was unfortunate. Because the very next day, I won the national lottery. He would have loved spending the money. Sadly, he never got the opportunity. Safran by Renault. The car you have when you can have what you want. Made from recycled paper, new improved Nouvelle is softer on nature and softer on your bottom. Cheeky. The triumph in more ways than one, Henry. I wasn't much older than you when I first opened her up. Caused a bit of a stink when me and Alfie, the boot boy, were caught doing 30 along the minstrel's gallery. At the Equitable Life, we never play fast and loose with your money. We pay no commission to middlemen. And we have no shareholders, so you profit from our principles. Right, Henry. Let's burn some rubber. It's an equitable life, Henry. This year, we remember the end of World War II. We remember those that died. But do we remember the living victims of war, who suffered appalling injury and disability, for whom life ever since has been a battle for survival, for whom the shadow of warfare never departs? 
This is an appeal on behalf of those brave men and women who rely on your support. They are the thousands of servicemen who lost limbs, the thousands of women who were left as widows, those who were blinded, and those that suffered permanent mental damage. By calling this number now and giving to Casualty Action, you can help rebuild their war-shattered lives. Your gift right now can give them hope for the future. So help us continue with this vital work. Please ring 0800 39 45 95 now and give as much as you can to Casualty Action. That's 0800 39 45 95. Thank you. When teeth are sensitive, it hurts. Sensodyne F and new Freshman Sensodyne Gel quickly calm the nerves that cause the pain of sensitive teeth. Je crois qu'il va carling blood level. Ah, c'est fait à 4.1%. Oui, pour les fameurs plus grands. Healthy people find it keeps them on an even keel. Others say they like the way it makes them feel. Some eat in the garden and it doesn't matter when. And some because it's no added sugar album. Some people eat it when there's no one else around. When the kids have gone to school and there's not a single sound. Some like it in the evening when the cats are news attend. Some because it's no added sugar album. I bet these fellas have been enjoying themselves for the past few months with all the rain that's been uh, coming down. But thankfully, it's been like a summer day today. And, uh, aye, aye. Hello, sailor. <laughs> I hope it's just for a photograph, or is he being helped home? Can't quite. <laughs> we'll send Big Mac in to investigate. Yeah, yeah. Oh, meanwhile, this could be, I think, our first picnic live on Channel 4 of 1994, March the 11th. And uh, it did start very, very pleasant, but I can tell you what, uh, they may have to pack that picnic up, I would think possibly in the next hour or so, because uh, it looks as if those clouds that uh, poured rain on Cheltenham earlier on today are just edging their way over here. And uh, they had quite a bit of rain at uh, Cheltenham, so any thoughts and hopes that the, the ground will be good for the start of the festival on Tuesday, well, I think those have been uh, washed away. They have had quite a bit of ground. We'll try and get the official going before we go off air. Last chance for the picture puzzle. Could you work out the name of this horse that's running or has run? Could there be a clue there? Somewhere today, 0891991144. The Regal Pet Shop makes him easier to carry. Those are the captions if you can't read them. Three first prizes of £100 each. Get on the phone if you can work out the name of that horse. Good Friday, which this year falls on April the 15th, traditionally a day where there's no racing. And that's why this year, as in the past, there'll be open days at both Middleham and Lambourne. Now, Middleham in North Yorkshire has really been revitalized in the past five years. All the stables will be open, so you pop in and see the horses. Plenty of attractions on the moor uh, after lunch, and it goes on all day. Same at Lambourne in Berkshire. It's on April the 15th. Go around all the stables in the morning and the afternoon. There's camel racing, celebrity bungee jumping. I wonder if our star, Lord Oaksy, is going to take part in that. April the 15th, Middleham in North Yorkshire, Lambourne in Berkshire. And it's interesting that Lambourne has two of the leading contenders for Tuesday's Smurfit-sponsored champion hurdle. They are large action from Oliver Sherwood Stable, currently on offer at 9 to 2, and Alderbrook, trained by Kim Bra Bailey, who's on offer at 13 to 2. Now this week, Bruff Scott, John Frankham and Jim McGrath have been out and about talking to Oliver Sherwood, Kim Bailey, as well as David Nicholson, the trainer of Rel Keel. We begin their reports with Oliver Sherwood, enthusing about large action and his gutsy display at Kelso last night. He's almost human, you know. I mean, probably after the hardest race he's had this season was up at Kelso. Every other race he's gone and won, and he said, I won, and he stopped. Uh, 
And it, Kelso, he did. He went all the way to the line and won a head, I think it was, or the neck. Uh, but he knew where the winning post was. I know it sounds a bit silly, but it's absolutely true. Uh, and uh, as a result, it was his hardest race, as at Kelso. But he does tend to idle when he hits the front. It won't happen in the champ in the champion hurdle because they'll go a gallop and he won't well if he wins that easy I'll be delighted but I can't see him winning that easy. Large action on the far side and Coulton nearest to us, spin up the bank at Mandown at Cheltenham. It will be much more serious stuff. Large action, his record is second to none. He was third in it last year. He's definitely an improved horse from last year. His preparation has gone perfectly, hadn't had any hiccups. And uh, yeah, I think they've got him to beat, I really do. He was bought to be a three-mile chaser. Paul Weber and I bought him at the Derby sale. And it wasn't until he actually won at Cheltenham last year as a novice, when he made a mistake, I think it was either two out or three out, came back and won, and won about six lengths. And I suddenly realised, right, we have got a serious horse here. And even last year, I, I, I was sort of, didn't know whether to go for the champion hurdle or not. And there was a few sort of, bets flying around and I thought well we've got nothing to lose let's have a crack and it, it vindicated my decision to run him I think the fact he finished third this year I really do believe he's a serious champion hurdle winner Raul Keel is in great form has had a slightly unusual preparation as much <coughs> that he jumped six fences yesterday as opposed to jumping six hurdles why was that David? because he can get a bit rapido when he won at Cheltenham in November he stepped at the third last and the second last, and Adrian said, come on, we must school this horse over the fence. Uh, just to make him bend and get in a bit closer, and it's worked. Touch wood. Is it a slight worry in top hurdling company that that just might be the Achilles heel in the horse? Well, I mean, you get a really good hurdler. There's always uh, the chance that they might step at one. I mean, Broadsword did at Liverpool years ago, and he was a super jumper, but he stepped at one and get travelling down the hill at Cheltenham, so the third or fourth, flat out, you just might step at one. To start with, we thought he was only ordinary and he got beat in his bumper at Huntingdon. And basically he's never looked back since. I wouldn't run him on firm ground because he's a big horse, but he goes on good ground and has got speed in soft ground. Well, so far he's shown speed in soft ground. I mean, whether he shows enough foot to win a champion hurdle, we'll see on Tuesday. Are you running him, if it's not a cheeky question, in hope or in real expectation? Well, at this moment in time, real expectation. Uh, come Tuesday, it'll be in hope, won't it? It's a very open race. I respect them all. I mean, fortunately, Famer is, is very much a horse I, I like. Alderbrook, I mean, obviously, he's trained by my next door neighbour and mate, Kim. Uh, to win a champion hurdle on your third hurdle race is going to be a tremendous performance, but he is a very high-class horse. They've got one left to go, trying again, shaken up. Olderbrook cruising up on the outside. What will he find on landing? The race was always going to be the champion hurdle. Um, if you've got beat at um, Wing Canton, we would have thought about going to the novice rather than the champion hurdle. The horse has only actually been cantering for five weeks by the time he actually ran at Wing Canton. He's had ten weeks walking around the roads at Newmarket. So hopefully he will have improved. He certainly seems to have done at home. Olderbrook on only his second run over Timber is storming home to win this Kingwell hurdle in tremendous style. Four, five lengths clear, gets a rich round of applause from the Wincanton crowd. And it was very, very heavy ground at um, Wincanton. It was virtually unraceable. Uh, he went through there like it was good to firm. Um, I hope he'll go up and down the hills and he'll get two miles, but I'm, I don't see why he shouldn't be. Some people were slightly concerned that Alderbrook was a little bit free in the early part of his race at Wincanton, but I just think he's an enthusiastic type of horse. Here he is coming up the all-weather gallop on the near side of Pampered Guest, and the other novice in the picture is Simple Arithmetic. first time he's had 12 stone to carry I mean, he's not a big horse would that be a problem i don't see why they all carry 12 stone i don't think it makes a nice difference really i mean if he was giving two stone away to everybody else it'd be a different matter but no i'm not worried about that he looks to people looking in from the outside as if there's, as if there's no problems with him at all i mean is there anything in the back of your mind that uh, would be a worry to 
I think the biggest worry we have is the fact, as being a novice, he, she hasn't made a mistake on the race course yet, and that's the moment that's going to find out whether he can actually cope with the experience of making a mistake. Um, you know, that's what handicappers are doing, and uh, he hasn't actually made one yet, and he's still a novice. Well, there'll be lots of lads in your yard, I'm sure, hoping that he doesn't make one. There certainly will be, yes. <laughs> Well, they were whispering after Wincanton, what did Alderbrook Brit beat? They're now screaming the house down. After the defeats today of the horses behind it, trying again was beaten. Uh, more stock down at Chepstow and Shatter Jack here. What did Alderbrook beat? However impressive it may have looked, what did it beat? That's the question they're asking. A novice trying to become the third to win the champion hurdle after Royal Gate in 92 and Door Knocker in 1956. Now, the bookmakers next week, they're going to be offering a quarter of the odds every horse at Cheltenham. Quarter of the odds, great keen to get, to get business. The Tote are going to town. They've got a quarter of a million pound guaranteed in the jackpot. In the place pot, quarter of a million pound guaranteed. 50,000 pounds at least guaranteed in the jackpot. And as I said, a quarter of the odds of place, all the bookmakers will be offering. And I've other very good news for you who fancy Deep Bramble to win the Tote Gold Cup, the highlight of everything on the Thursday. First of all, it's run on the new course. And that course is much softer than the, on the, on the, the other course that they use. So the soft ground will help, and it's been raining at Cheltenham. And secondly, the stable of Paul Nichols has been out of form. It's no longer. James I has absolutely buzzed in in the 420 at Southall at 11 to 4 favourite. So the news is very good. Back to form at last. Paul Nichols, after over a month without a winner, 15 losers. He's got his winner. Deep Bramble is really on song for the Tote Gold Cup. Let's look at the betting here. And it's three, it's 11 to 4. They're going now. Master Oaks are going absolutely the key. If it did come at all firm or, or good, it would drift out really heavy. It might even shorten up. With five, Joe Darmy, seven to two, Barton Bank, ten, Monsieur Le Curie, and eleven, Ireland. Um, Mary Gale at Ireland have won it 18 times. Val Delane, 11 to 1. But Peter O'Sullivan on the morning line, who knows the Dooman team, says Algon is the one that has been back. There's now 100 to 6, 16 to 1, the King George winner. And also support for Minnie Homer, the national winner of the soft ground would suit that. And now Dean Bramble, of course, but things are going right for that. So great betting on the Gold Cup, but 11 to 4 favourite, Mary Gale, that's the price against that. As for the Daily Express Triumph, Hurgle Balanac. It's going to be one of the great big punts of the season. You remember, my silver was two to one favourite winning last year. Put in now seven to two against Balanac. That's the horse they won't want to win. The bookmakers with David Nicholson's fair Anzum at six and some money this morning for Silver Wedge, who was so badly beaten last time. Now a seven to one chance. Brave Tornado, the form standing up with Brave Tornado in at fourteen to one, and you can get fourteen to one Greenback with twenty to one Clifton Beat, owned by Des O'Connor. He'll be singing if that can win. So wide open betting and the Cheltenham races. But for those of you who are on Deep Bramble, James the first winning at Southall, Paul Nichols back in form. We're back in with a chance, and the rain's coming down at Cheltenham. And on the uh, the Alderbrook front, if you've backed to Alderbrook, don't compete in this bad. John has quite correctly said, what's he beat? Try again, well beaten today. It's worth reporting that uh, David Gandolfo, trying against favourite uh, trainer, says he don't think you can count that form. Today, the horse definitely wasn't himself. He was in trouble a long way out, and he thinks the case of going to the well once too often. We'll see the truth of all that, what really works out after the champion hurdle on Tuesday. As you know, we've got a special Cheltenham preview programme at 10.55 on Monday. In that, we'll begin a special look at the David Nixon stable and whether Viking flagship can defend his two-mile champion crown. And while we were there, we took the chance to ask David what did he think was the best of all his chances at Cheltenham. This year he came out, he ran a super race in the tote race at um, Chepstow, who was second. Uh, then he bolted up at Newbury. It was very impressive with Ascot. And uh, unfortunately, he hurt himself at, Kem at Cheltenham, his next run in heavy ground, pulled all the muscles over his, between his hip and the top of his backside. And I thought it was doubtful that he'd ever get to Cheltenham. Well, thanks to my physios, Maggie Turner and Mia, uh, and the vet and the staff and everything else, the horse seems absolutely 100% as work super. And I think he'll take all the beating. That's like, a, like a, a, a quiz question, because we had all the reasons why David thought the horse was his best at Cheltenham, but he didn't actually manage to avoid it. We clipped the tape actually saying the horse's name. Well, it's a suitable number of five, as I'll tell you. Perhaps as a producer, I'd better tell you. Anyway, 
the horse was, of course, Hebridean. So Hebridean, David thinks, is the best of his chances at Cheltenham. And now, let's look at the excitements ahead. As I say, we've got that preview program 10.55 on Monday, and then on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we do have a morning line. On Tuesday, we have first race at 2.15, and we've got live 2.15, 2.50, 3.30, and 4.05. Uh, those races, of course, the uh, the uh, Supreme Novices, the Guinness Arkle Challenge, the Smurfit Champion Hurdle, and the Rich Club National Hunt Handicap Chase on the Tuesday, and on Wednesday the first and Thursday, the first four races each day, and we have a morning line each morning, and the going at the moment on the old course, which is Tuesday and Wednesday, is soft, good to soft in places. The new course, as John was saying, is, is softer, it's soft at the moment, heavy in places. A tremendous amount depends uh, not just on the amount of rain we get, but the amount of wind we get, because rain for a bit, and if it, wind, it gets windy, it can clear things up a lot. Road works, you're planning it. You get the first thing to say is go early, but on the M5 at junction 11, and A40 in the Golden Valley, and the A429 north of Stowe on the World. M25 junction 11, the A40 in the Golden Valley, and A429 north of Stowe on the World. For heaven's sake, if you're going to tell me you want to enjoy it, do please get there early. And they're down at the start for HMS Sand down here. Comes into, into play. HMS Sand, the handicap chase. It's three miles and a half a furlong, five runners from Graham. And they have won 32 races and over £190,000 in winning place prize money. The 11 to 8 favourite, Mr. Boston, the top weight, Peter Niven ride. Sheer ability of 4 to 1, Mick Fitzgerald. Spikey at 6 to 1, Jamie Osborne. Bonsai Bird, 5 to 1, Dean Gallagher. And Annie O'Chelloni at 6 to 1 is ridden by Philip Hyde. That's the lineup for the HMS Sandown Handicap. They're down at the start. Well, Frankie, Mr. Boston's your charity bet. How much have you had on it? Well, I've gone for maximum of a tenner. Um, I was a little bit uh, surprised to hear that he actually set off this morning because uh, Mary Reevely said it's a five-hour trip if he comes down early on Saturday morning, which is sensible, otherwise it's seven on a Friday night. But uh, they're underway. Let's join Graham. And they make their way down towards the first of the 22 fences, and on the inside, Mr. Boston uh, comes racing through to take up the running. It's a very steady pace indeed, and it's set by Mr. Boston, who just has the edge. The spiky on the inside, Annie Ciloni, then the wide of these is sheer ability, and it's bonsai about the back marker as they level up down the back stretch and towards flight number two as they come into it there's only about three lengths between the five runners and at it uh, Anil Chiloni led Anil Chiloni Mr. Boston and up on the outside that's the right as we look at them that's sheer ability these are followed through by Spikey who's just shaded at this camera angle three in the air together and the pink colors out the back is bonsai bird a horse that's dropped in the weights quite considerably come down towards the next one which is an open ditch and at it it was Sheer Ability who led. Sheer Ability, Annie O'Chilloni, the white sleeve jacket on the inside. The black and white colours, the right of the picture, Mr. Boston, just shaded at this camera angle, is spiky, a horse with a bad wind to run ratio, but is uh, four clear of uh, bonsai bird. As they take the water jump, and Annie O'Chilloni leading. He is pricked, has the edge to Sheer Ability in second, and then we have uh, Spikey in third, and Mr. Boston in fourth. And they head towards the first of the railway fences. And Bonsai Bird, rather awkward out the back. Come down towards fence number seven. And it's Sheer Ability, who rather ballooned that a little bit. Leader from Annie Ocelloni in second. Mr. Boston on the right, on the inner is Spikey. And those four safely over, and Bonsai Bird also over. But the back marker was detached by about uh, five lengths from the main group. They were headed by Sheer Ability, one of the most progressive horses of last season went up some 30 pounds in the weights last year and hasn't really struck form this this is only his third outing however so it's a sheer ability of the leader mr boston on the outside of annie ocelloni and bonsai bud and then spikey and now the lads have got the headsets back on we can have a word with them yeah it's a married man's gallop and uh, quite rightly so nearly the end of a long Saturday afternoon sheer ability has been jumping particularly well but uh, in actual fact they all have spiky normally tends to make what, at least one mistake during a race so far uh, fortunately for Jamie Osborne he hasn't made one yet so uh, the further he goes the more likely is it's about to happen let's go back to Graham that was the 10th 
and it's Anya Chalerny in the white sleeve jacket just spearheading Mr. Boston on the right and sheer ability on the left. Spike is in fourth and Bonsai Bud in fifth. This is an open ditch and the top weight. Mr. Boston just has the edge. To Anya Chalerny on the inside and the order as they come up past us is only about four lengths in it. This is the HMS Sandown handicap chase and it's Anya Chalerny who just goes into the lead. From in second place, Mr. Boston, and then she uh, then uh, sheer ability in third with Bonsai Bird. Riding up on the outside of Spikey, and they head towards what was their first and will be the 12th fence in this three mile chase. Danny Ocelloni, the leader, to Mr. Boston, who uh, finished second in the Midlands Grand National a couple of years ago. A Dua Stayer, the 11 to 8 favourite. Sheer ability at 7 to 2, Bonsai Bird 11 to 2, Annie Ocelloni at 11 to 2, and Spikey is the outsider of the party at 6 to 1. All to play for then. Race downhill, come towards fence number 12. Mr. Boston and Annie Ocelloni share the pace. Mr. Boston, Annie Ocelloni. This is the 12th, it's a plain fence, it's downhill, and uh, Mr. Boston really jumps it well. Bonsai Bud a little bit slow out the back. Mr. Boston has the edge. Jim, and he stays forever. Will he stay in front? Well, it's quite interesting that Pip Hyde's horse in second place, Annie Ancelloni, uh, is usually very indolent, but in fact he's gone much more sweetly for a circuit or so. Well, it'll be interesting to see if he takes hold of his bride and now Mr. Boston's gone past him. Certainly Mr. Boston stays very well. He should hold the aces from here. And Philip Hyde on Annie Ancelloni coming through on the inside of Mr. Boston in the air together. Sheer ability is getting closer. And then we have Spikey clear from Bonsai Bud. Continue the run down the far side. And Philip Hyde really going to work on Annie Ocelloni. Really asked him for a big one. And he got one. Mr. Boston on the outside. Sheer ability of Mick Fitzgerald to cruising in behind these two in third place. Annie Ocelloni, though, leads as they come in towards uh, the water jump. And going into it, Annie Ocelloni got his ears pricked. And Mr. Boston in the air together. Stride for stride they go. Six more fences to jump in this race. And it's Mr. Boston and Annie Ocelloni stride for stride. The three railway fences now come very close together. Meet the first one right, and you should meet all of them right. Spikey on the inside of... Uh, on the right of the picture now, sheer ability. Bonsai Bud is a back marker. Come down towards the fifth from home, and they take it with Mr. Boston showing the way. And the Peter Niven. From in second place, Spikey, and then Annie Ocelloni, the white sleeve jacket, is uh, three lengths down in third place now. Sheer ability having gone from uh, moving very well indeed, just a little bit flat-footed, and Bonsai Bud is making a bit of ground on the outside of the back. Well, only five runners, but can you name the winner? It's Mr. Boston, the leader. And Mr. Boston from in second place <clears throat> on the outside, Spikey, Annie Ocelloni. Here comes a sheer ability, given a breather by Mick Fitzgerald. Further right is uh, Bonsai Bird, come down towards the third last, and only about uh, two lengths between the pack. It's going to be a cracker. Mr. Boston and Spikey, and on the right, uh, sheer ability. Further right is Bonsai Bird and Annie Ocelloni. Is that the first to crack? This is the third last, and Spikey on the outside of Mr. Boston. All of a sudden, Bonsai Bud is going up and down on the spot, and Mr. Boston has the edge. Uh, Spikey is in a good mood today. Further right is sheer ability. This is the second last. Black and white, Mr. Boston. Green sleeve is Spikey. Green and red, further right, sheer ability. And they've got one to jump in the HMS Sandown Handicap Chase. And for Mary Reeve, Mr. Boston has drawn four clear. It's not over yet. Sheer ability is after him. This is the last. Mr. Boston, sheer ability and Spikey, who are rallying to the call as the post comes. But Mr. Boston has the edge. He's won 12 races, and it's going to be the 13th because in second place, sheer ability isn't going to get to him. Up towards the line, Mr. Boston's going to take it up the line. Mr. Boston is the winner. Sheer ability is second, back in third. Is Spikey a very close call for fourth? Bonsai Bud and Annie Ocelloni. There's some 500 pounds in that, but the result then of this, the HMS Sandown Handicap Chase, the 11 to 8 favourite, Mr. Boston has won in the colours of Mr. M.K. Oldham, framed by Mary Reevely, ridden by Peter Niven, made the long journey down here, Peter's uh, 78th winner of the season. Second is number two, Sheer Ability, Mick Fitzgerald. Third, number three, Spikey, Jamie Osborne. Fourth was number four, Bonsai Bud, the, the Gallagher, And fifth was number five, Annie O'Killerney. Well, that doesn't happen very often. The one, two, three, four, five were one, two, three, four, five. Mr. Boston's 13th win of the season, by far and away the uh, most experienced uh, winner-wise horse in the field, and he's uh, stayed on up the hill really dearly, and uh, clearly is going to be a force to be reckoned with with all the major staying handicaps as the spring season unfolds. Mr. Boston takes this, the HMS 
Sandown handicap chase and completing quite a good plan for the uh, tipsters this morning on the morning ride. The shock horror in Gigi's voice as he reads that fact out. But uh, we don't have many days, so let's enjoy it. Mr. Boston here, Peter Niven maximizes his chance. He's on a favorite. He's okay. The horse has got the best current form and he's fully entitled to win. But he made sure that this horse with form over three and a half miles didn't get involved in a sprint. He stepped it up about seven from home. The horse is just idling, pricking his ears in front. Peter knows what he's got uh, in the locker, so to speak. And you watch, he fits his horse, taps his horse twice behind the saddle after the last. He's one with a fair bit in hand. Good run by Spikey, particularly as he breasted at least one down the far side. Always likely to ruin his chance by such a mistake. But John, if you back Mr. Boston here, you were sure a collector. Yes, and he's a lovely horse. That's how I should imagine he's a nice horse to ride to. Looks uh, as though he gets himself well organised. A lot of that the credit obviously goes to Peter Niver, but knows what he's doing at the fences. Keeps galloping. He's very quick over his fences. Just whips his front feet up out of the way and uh, spends no time. He's not the most impressive jumper, but he's very, very good at what he does. And good stiff run up this uh, hill just suited him. Never really in danger of getting beaten. Peter even just pushing him out, hands and heels. He's had to work hard. A lot of you think, oh, well, he's won easily. I can assure you that uh, he'd have made Peter blow a fair bit. Um, but you'd think the horse, you'd agree the horse had a bit up his sleeve, so? Or are you being Perhaps. awkward again? No, not at all. No, I'd, I'd say that he'd have kept on galloping. Quite interesting. Looks as though he's got some muck coming out of his nose there. And uh, the lad who looks after him, we were talking to him earlier, and uh, we were just discussing that it's an awful long way back to Saltbourne if he doesn't win, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> he was very confident. Hey, you're right. Mr. Boston, the close third to Deep Ramble in the mile may boost that horse yet again, winning here at 11 to 8 favourite. It did touch 6 to 4, and it's the sixth favourite in 22 runnings of this race over three miles to win. The runner up, Sheer Ability, went off at 7 to 2 with a third spiky, a 6 to 1 chance. And the lads have been going on about the charity bets. I worry about these jockeys we had in. We had three winners on the charity bets given by the lads. Brought Richard Dunwoody, he gave his East Thorpe. They were second at nine to four favour in the 3.30. But Jimbo had Jers at four to one. Simon Holt, a real screamer here at ANC Express, uh, uh, Express at nine to one at Chepstow. And here we come in the greatest jockey himself, a great man for the long distance chases. He knew that Mr. Boston was the one, 11 to eight favourite. And after James I wins at Subtle, that proves that Paul Nichols is in Form. Now the form itself is standing up for Deep Bramble. You won't get much each way. 20 to 1 Deep Bramble now with the rain coming down as well. Everything going for it each way in the Gold Cup. Actually, it's very interesting what John said coming in there because he mentioned it to uh, myself and Derek who were watching the race with him. We didn't think that at the time he must have eagle eyes, Franken, because you can see quite clearly that Mr. Boston does have some muck at the uh, end of both nostrils. That's certainly not usual, is it? No. Well, not for a horse that's fit and well. No, it's very rare. I mean, some horses might have it. I don't know. He's a horse that I've seen run before. I've never noticed it before. Um, and it certainly doesn't look to have affected the way that he's run. But it's, um, it's something that you would particularly want to see. I've got John Carter with me now. John Carkery. Don, Don Carkery, <laughs> who's with the horse. And does he always have snot in his, in, his, in his nostrils like that? Yeah, he just has a slight dust allergy. We have to feed him on hay mm. to keep him on paper at home. Well, you were saying to John and Kev beforehand, there'd be an awful long way back to Saltburn. Yes, that's right. But he seems, I mean, he's one of 14 or something, this horse. He's very, very tough and consistent. Yes, he is, yes. Uh, he's doing good, actually, to get his head back in front, you know, as today. He's, uh, you know, been carrying a lot of weight up around the north, you know, so uh, I think he's better. You know, coming down here running these sort of handicaps. Oh, well, it's, it's better if you win. Yes, but just tell us right. the mechanics of actually getting down here. How long did it take you? When, when did you leave? We left at five o'clock this morning. Oh, this morning? Yes, did... uh, got here for ten o'clock, so five hours drive straight down. And do, and do, and do, you, do you normally do this on the, on the day, do, do the night before? What happens if there's been uh, terrible weather or something? Well, uh, we feel it's better for this horse to come down because he has a dust allergy. Yeah. He's better in his own stable at home. We mm. can get a better run down at five o'clock on Saturday morning than we can leaving at uh, dinner time on Friday night. It would take about you know seven hours doing, to John? get down. And what about tonight? Will you stop here or will you go straight back tonight? We'll go back tonight. How soon? How soon will you leave? Will you get back uh, tonight? He'll, he'll have about an hour or so afterwards and uh, we'll probably back home about 11 o'clock tonight. <laughs> it's a long old day, <laughs> Yeah, it's it? a long round trip. What about, what about Cheltenham? Are you making the trip there, Don? 
Yes, yes, we've got, uh, I think we'll have uh, definitely probably three runners at Cheltenham. Wh which are they? Uh, probably Robert E. Lee, mm -hmm. uh, Mystic Memory, and then Uncle Doug in the Triumph Hurdle, and then we've got Cab for the next day. We've just been talking to different trainers, and yeah. David will say Hebridean was his best. What's your, what's your best for Cheltenham, of yours, your three? Well, I'd like to think Uncle Doug would go there with a nice chance. And for the Champion Hurdle and Gold Cup? Uh, I wouldn't like to say, really. You've done, we, any, we, done any anti post yourself? No, I haven't backed anything myself, so, uh, well, you are, know. You, are you ahead on the year? Did you back this thing? No, I didn't. <laughs> well, you've got a, yeah. a, hope for a nice drink coming when you finally get back. Yes, that's right. Great to talk to you. Thank you. Okay, all right. Thank you. SP? And where there's muck in the nose, there's money. First number one, Mr. Boston, the 11 to 8 favourite. Second number two, Sheer Ability at 7 to 2. And third number three, Spikey at 6 to 1. Five rounds. The 4.30 resulted air, first number one high altitude, the 8 to 1 on favourite. Not all that impressive, although he beat Musket shot at 10 to 1 by 20 lengths. Had a good look at his fences. Non-runner number four, only two finish, four ran. The 4.20 result at Southall, uh, return to winning ways for Paul Nichols stable with first number one, James the first at 11 to 4. Second number two, Dear Do, the 9 to 4 favourite. And third number three, Chica at 7 to 2, five ran. Now here's the champion tipster competition details today. The maximum points available are 133. Wasn't too difficult today. The telephone claims required are 95 points or more. And here's the number to ring 0990 100 0990 And you can ring until midnight tomorrow. Now, if you're looking for a few Cheltenham expenses, here are the names that you require from Sandown today. The 155 winner, first number two, East Shore, the Evens joint favourite, non-runner there, number three. In the 225, the promoted winner is now top priced at seven to one for the 1,000 guineas, having dropped from ten to one. But Willie Carson won't be making a decision for a few days whether to ride her or the free handicap runner-up, Harry, uh, also owned by... Jake Hamdan, who is a very generously priced 5-to-1 joint favourite with one bookmate.